the last I left off, drill instructor Sergeant Escanada, he was walking in the middle of the aisle. Now I'm going to fast forward some things here. Uh, he took us to pick up, he took us to the armory to pick up our weapons. It was very systemic. Hey, line up here, grab this, 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 sign up here. It went very fast. He took us to pick up our black gloves or gloves that we put on when we shot. He took us to pick up some, uh, a lot of other things that I don't remember. And so I'm gonna fast forward. So he's been hazing us all, he been, he's been hazing us all day. He's been blaming me for everything. Hey, hey, Buford, he, he's still not running. Here, run that way, run that way, run that, run that way, run that way. You know, so he's hazing us all throughout the day. Here, he has us lined up in the barracks. We're, we're, we're online. He calls me up there. You want to start with Sergeant Escanada? Buford, Buford, come up here. I run up there. He looks at me. T this whole day, you haven't been running. You haven't been screaming. I look at him. I, sir. Okay. He says, so how about this? How about this? If you don't run at me, or, or if you don't scream at me, he, I remember he looked off and he started to think of it. He said, if you don't scream at me, I'm going to go in my office right now and I'm going to call the police on you because you signed a contract with the Marine Corps and you aren't fulfilling it. And I didn't say it, but I'm thinking in my, my head, what did this man just, did this man literally just threaten to call the police on me in front of everybody? Like that, it was just such a weird power play, but I'm playing his game. Ah, right, sir! You know, I scream back at him. He's like, and you still don't want to scream. He's, he's like, how about this? He started moving toward that office. I started getting scared. I, <laughs> he's like, I will literally go in there and call the police on you. And he does that thing again where, where he starts off calm. And then, and then he's like, all right, scream back. Scream! And then he, like this big old uh, burst of spit splat me in my, my face. And I scream back at him. Hi, right, sir! So he tells me to go back, go, go back online. And as I go back online, the thought just stayed with me. Did this man literally just say he's going to call the police on me? Okay. So you, ha you, you just have people like that. You have people in powerful positions. And then you have drill instructors who are there to be hard on you, to make you callous and to make you a good person. And... He certainly wasn't that. He was more of a person who was going to use and abuse his power and be deceptive and lie. So that really confused me because I thought to myself, honor, courage, commitment. Did, did, did he really just lie to me or did, did he really just, just do that? But anyhow, I got back online. Uh, fast forward. I'm on duty. So it's late at night. It's cold, freaking just shivering. I, I believe I, I had on uh, my camis, freaking, it's cold at night, people are shivering, he told us that we can't get underneath our sheets, so people are sleeping on these freaking, it, the, the sheets are like glacier glaciers, I mean, they are freaking cold, and you are in there shivering, and it's dark, and, and even though you're in there with 60, even though we were in there with 60 odd people, you felt so alone. I'm on duty. I'm on duty with this guy named Box or Recruit Box because we call everyone Recruit and then by their last name. Recruit Box is around 32, 33. No, he was 33 years old and he wore glasses. He was an older person. He had his own family. And the thing about Box is he was nice. It's just when he got put underneath stress, he would get very, very mad. Okay, so drill instructor Sergeant Escanada, he has us in there. He had he tells us to count all of the black gloves, get a right or get a right and get a left, and then uh, ball them up and then put it inside the bag of each recruit in there. And as he's giving us these instructions, he's telling us, look, it's nighttime. So you won't scream at me, but what you will do is you will speak with very high intensity. And I'm like, oh, sir. And I guess that was I guess that wasn't intense enough for him. So he's like, run. 
Okay, <laughs> we we run and me and recruit box we running. He's like, come back. Okay, we 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 turn around and we we run back. My cover fall off and he's just playing games with us the whole night. And then afterwards, he goes to his office. Recruit box is mad at me. He comes up to me, Buford, you really need to tighten up. He's been hating us all day because of you. And he 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 he, he picks up my cover, walks it to me. And he, I remember, he puts it on my my head, and he like mushed it, and and start uh, swiveling it around. He took it off and, and threw it, and I was thinking to myself, "Don't knock him out, don't do it," because the spotlight was already on me, and I didn't want to make things worse than what they had to be. So that happens. I go to sleep. I forget exactly how many hours I was on duty, but I didn't get much sleep, or we didn't get much sleep, rather. We wake up the next morning, we marching through the darkness, our whole platoon, and we we go to the chow hall. It's dark, you know, our whole platoon is lined up, we're playing games, screaming, and we end up going in there and getting breakfast. And when you go in there to get breakfast, it's still chaos. You have drill instructors, Walking around very intensely, you have recruits not running, but walking intensely, screaming back at the drill instructors. It's chaos, chaos. Even when you're eating, the drill instructor is still messing with you. Okay, so we got done eating. We came back. We uh, did a lot of exercise. We did a lot of, of or he, he, he actually counted how many pull-ups we can do. And if you didn't lock your arms the whole way, it just didn't count. So he, we did that. We did a lot of exercise. Got hay some more. He blamed me some more. Very well. Now, that was the last hour, the last day we were going to see him. Uh, another drill instructor comes. It's late at night. He's white. I remember he's short, bald head. He was actually pretty nice. He was actually a pretty nice person. Uh, even nice, not just by uh, drill instructor standards, but he, he was very chill. But, you know, he would tell us, hey, 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 everyone, here, uh, uh, y'all can go and start swearing yourselves away and, and do 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 this, this and that. But he wasn't screaming at us at all. But he, he was only there for the, the night. It's just, uh, like I said, he called, I remember he calls me up at night. I believe I was still on duty, but he calls me up and he, he asked me, are, are you a crew, Bu Buford? And I say... Yes, sir. And he's like, you want to know what? Just, 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 just leave it alone. I just, I just need to know that, that that's all. You're good to go. And I'm thinking to myself, well, why would he ask me that? Okay, so I, so I run away. And as you transition out, you start to see like they're gossiping about you. And they are telling the other drill instructors so that when they get there and meet this recruit, you already have a bad reputation. Very well. So he does that. The next morning, I didn't know what we were in for. Jesus Christ. Okay. So we are up there in the front, in the front of our barracks, in the front of our SWAT bay near the drill instructor, the drill instructor home. Uh, it's a like a, a big re rectangular space, black mats on each side, and we're sitting on them. The drill instructor, he's. Uh, introducing us to our new drill instructors. It was three of them. And he, I forget the whole speech, but he's telling us, this is drill instructor Sergeant Miller. Sergeant Miller marches up there, steps up. He's this white guy with this big freaking neck, veins popping all, all out of it. White guy, uh, his, his face is real red. He's bald headed. And there's something so extremely uh, just intense about him he says this is drill instructor sergeant mata sergeant mata is this I, I, he looked like he was from the philippines smaller light brown I, I remember he had just had this very wide lips like this so he marches up there boom boom he said this is senior drill instructor sergeant burke drill instructor sergeant burke he's skinnier he's probably around 5 10 5 11 he's black uh, he actually kind of looked it like me. Yeah, uh, he, he, even when he marched, uh, stepped up, he just seemed very calm, collected. 
he was uh, just, he, he like I said, he, he was dark like me. So he, he marches up there and then boom. I mean, it just started like that. They separated off. Drill instructor Sergeant Mata or drill instructor Sergeant Miller went to one side. Drill instructor or senior drill instructor Sergeant Burke went to the other side. And you get up. They get up. Hi, sir. And that's when all hell broke loose. I'm talking about you had freaking 30 people running this way. Run that way. Run that way. Pick up the bunk beds. You know, two people break off the the pick up the bunk beds. They they sprinting down down that long freaking aisle and and. And then they break off and start picking up the bunk beds. And then over here, you got the other 30-odd 30, 30 people running back and forth, stopping, doing all these push-ups. You know, and, and you have th this just a hysteric screaming from the drill instructors and this hysteric screaming from the recruits in return. And they're freaking sprinting everywhere. I'm talking about bodies are flying everywhere. Freaking. Now, when they broke off to each side... Drone instructor Sergeant Mata, he ain't break off to nobody except for me. He he, he went straight to me. I, I I don't remember specifically when they pointed me out, but that that man knew me. Are you a Crip Buford? I forget exactly how, how he said it, but are you a Crip? Are you a Crip Buford? Ah, right, sir, get up, get up. And you know he, I get up, and this man had me pick up this black foot locker that's in front of our bunk beds. So I pick it up and it weighs probably like 25, 30 pounds. Boom. Run. Run. And gee, man, I, I was running. Boom, 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 boom. I was running with this big old freaking foot locker. And, and it's kind of awkward running with it because if I put it in front of my legs, it, it's going to bump and I'm going to fall. And so I had to hold it up all the way up to my chest, which was very, very hard. And he's like, stop. Put it down. Okay, stop. Put it down. Pick it up. Uh, and, okay, stop. Put it down. And, and. He, he's sprinting with me. He's sprinting me with me the whole time through these through these barracks, and of course he's not carrying on anything. So he's beating me, and he's like, "Sprint that way, sprint that way!" And freaking, I'm doing this, doing this. He got me putting the Foot Locker down, doing incline push-ups on it, and it was just pure chaos and hysteria. And we, every time that they would tell us to stop, we would think, "Oh man, we're done." I mean, people are just bleeding sweat. I'm talking about for hour, and we think it's over. Boom, goes on for another 30 minutes, another 30 minutes. Now we had two hours. It goes on for three hours. It goes on for three and a half hours, and it was like, I can't believe this is happening right now. And it, they haze us for four straight hours, and the, the window panes, on the wall or bulkheads, they are just perspiring, perspiring with sweat and humidity, humidity because they are hazing us so hard that all of the heat and sweat is coming from us, and it's going to the window, the window panes, and so the window panes are just drenched with all kind, kind of, uh, of, of water, and it, it's sweating all the way down. And so it was bad, man. After they, after we got done with, with four hours of being hazed, I could just see it in people's eyes. They knew that they made a mistake. And I remember that day, a drill instructor has us take all, off all of our uh, clothes. We're, we're going in there to take a shower. It's this big metal pole, metal pole, two of them. And from it, it's these shower heads. And people are gathering around it so that they can... Wipe themselves up and and uh, take a shower. Is blasting out cold water. It's around 60 people, and so a lot of people didn't get to clean up. I know I didn't, and so I was still sweaty and dirty and nasty. And the whole time, the drill instructor, he's talking to us. He's talking to us, and it's calm, but it's still abrasive. He's telling us, a lot of you may know that you made a mistake, coming into Marine Corps basic training. You will be here for an extended amount of time. If you choose to try to leave, that will extend your time here at Paris Island. Your fastest way out is to pass basic training. And I, he, I can just see the misery in people's eyes. If they could leave at that moment, they would have. 
but I just have to reiterate, I just remember seeing the look in people's eyes of realizing that they made a mistake. But it was something about it, man. Something about it that I really, I really loved. It was something about it that I really loved. It was very uncomfortable. It was very painful. But I was here and I was working towards something. Next up, things get more sadistic. Things get more brutal. Things get bad. If you want me to continue this story, comment below.